Good afternoon. Welcome back to the BH virtual event space. Today you're tuned in to building your vision. We're going to go beyond the image making process. And uh, for what that entails, I'm going to leave it up to the men of the hour, Bruce Byers, Himanshu Pandya, joining us once again. How's it going, guys? Hey, how are you? Um, I'm doing wonderful, Bruce. I know you're getting everything set up there and getting ready to take us away. So I'm going to turn it over to you guys, and I will see you in a bit for some Q&A. I can't hear you, Bruce. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. No, All right. Yeah. <laughs> can, you see my, can you see the right screen this time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, um, we're back. We're back with our second edition here. Uh, once, once you've taken all those pictures, now um, let's edit. And uh, we're doing it here again with B&H at uh, Event Space, which is really great. And um, today is uh, is all about editing. Building your vision. Yep. And um, and you know, massive amounts of editing going on these days. Um, I'm Bruce Byers. I'm Manishu Pandya. And, and thank you, B&H, for having us here. You know, it's it's a great place. Um, so uh, travel travel photography um, has been our life and blood for many years. It has given us the, uh, the chance to create. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Uh, this B&H event will give you our ideas, how we edit our work and for a book or a show or for anything else you can think of. All right. So I'm Bruce Byers and um, I love, I love traveling and I love getting uh, people on uh, around the world and showing them how to take pictures and showing my pictures when I come home. Camera Odyssey is my uh, photographic adventures. Um, and to make people smile, if I can make someone smile, that, that gives them you know, sometimes that's the only thing I can give them. And I'm, a, I consider myself a documentary environmental portrait storyteller. Um, so I've, I've shot all the way back from the, from the uh, 60s. So I've hit the film air and, um, and, you know, just turning around and seeing the picture behind you is kind of one of my, my go-tos all the time. I shoot black and white. I shoot, I shoot with uh, my my uh, Leica M6s, which, uh, you know, I can only put film in. Um, and so it's my my street moments, my decisive moment. Um, and I love it and I go after it. And it's my, you know, when I need to relax and pick up my camera and I work on my street moments. Uh, portraiture um, is is my way of, of telling of telling stories of the people that I meet. Um, and then getting involved with uh, things like COVID, um, documenting um, people in need, um, going into countries that I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to run into and just running into magnificent people um, in crazy places around the world. Some are very sad. Sad things happen. And other times, real crazy, dangerous things happen. So, Hamishu, um, tell me about yourself. What's what's going on these days? Hi, I'm Himanshu, and uh, travel is not just my life. It's, uh, it's my true passion. And my travel gigs is how I share my passion through my photography adventure workshops. Travel and um, in travel, people and, and culture fascinates me. I'm a travel, tourism, cultural exploration, and automotive and lifestyle photographer. Uh, I grew up growing up in India uh, with different in different states. It gives me a unique perspective with people, their culture, food, and and portraiture along with uh, landscape. Basically, I try to capture the entire aspect of the, the destination, right from uh, wildlife to portrait to landscape. It 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 just giving the story about the place from their from the colors they use, the people, the kind of clothes they wear, and and not only traveling abroad, all over the world, even in my backyard. I'm I'm based in New York right now, and and you find this kind of quiet movement in back 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 backyard of in New York City. And architecture is always close to my heart, being a 
interior designer. I see architecture from designers. I, and I mean, all in all, I try to always also cover automotive uh, in, in a travel landscape. And it gives me the entire, and it takes me to the fun places like the Southern Thailand and they celebrate their new year with, with water all over the world. I was there for almost half a day in, under the water. Yes. But with the, my, my camera covered with yeah. the cover camera. I got from BNH. <laughs> Definitely. You might have to go home and buy a few more cameras after that one. <laughs> um, so, you know, that, that, that picture is great. So it takes us into, uh, you know, technical problems. You know, we've got technical problems all the time that we have to deal with in order to bring those pictures back. So I've got a solution for it. Um, and, <laughs> I love your solution. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if you can't laugh over this, you know, how many times have you picked up the camera? But well, wait a second, I can do the other. Oh, okay. So in, in photography, I've always believed and I've always told other people that I work with or teach or whatever, is there are no dumb questions in photography. Uh, don't think you know. Learn so you know. So you know. You know if, if I think sure. the sun is going to come up over there, I don't know what I'm talking about. I need to know the sun's going to come over there so I can get my shot. Um, you know, um, there's the, before we even start, you know, you know, it's the whole idea is to make sure that your work is backed up then backed up again and you know the whole the old saying go back to number one don't forget to back up again um in my system my working drive is an eight drive raid which is continually backed up to a service called backblaze in the background it just constantly is is uh backing it up and then i take that working drive and i back it up to another eight drive raid um you know you have other other ways of doing it, but everybody does. Yeah, it's always backup, backup, backup. Right, friend. When you are on the on out there shooting, you edit every day. You come back, you backup, backup, backup on your portable hard drive. When you go back to your studio, I have a working working hard drive which is speed, which has speed in it. So I put dump everything in it, and then once your work is done, then again backup, backup, backup in your archival hard drive. Yeah, and, and nowadays you get good deals out of it. I get all my hard drives from BNH all the time. Yeah, they they got great deals all the time there too. Um, you know, so um, editing images for a book or a show is kind of what we're talking about today. And um, coming from still in the in the film world, um, my my roll of film hasn't changed thirty six frames. So I actually edit while I'm shooting because I only have 36 um, times to push that button. So I, I go through the, the contact sheet. I pick up the ones that I want and I put it in. I use bridge and I, I create it. It gives me the numbers where they are listed in, the, in my filing cabinet. And then I get even tighter down to, to, a, uh, to a, uh, a group. Um, and it could be going towards the, the idea of a book or it could be going towards the idea of a show. But at least I've got the best of the best in one area. Then you get to digital. <laughs> yeah. In that, you're dealing with 36 <laughs> only. <laughs> uh, there's the, I think what's up to 1,500 raw files on a on 180, 28. And I've got six or seven of them in my camera bag. I mean, it's it's crazy. So, uh, but still, I go into Bridge. I use the the coding and the editing in the Bridge, and I pick the ones that I want. And then I've got a which I've had for years, a, a inexpensive laser printer that prints out, um, you know, four by six prints, and um, I then edit it together. So this this edit was dealing with uh, Cuban artists, and so I will edit all the the pictures that I think are good um, and I'll get it down tighter and tighter. And then I'll put together a small packet of images that I now have to edit seriously. <clears throat> and I'll put a clamp on it here in New York. We stand around the subway sometimes for hours and it's a great place for me to yep. just stand there. <laughs> I flip through them. 
Um, I put a crimp on the corner of the ones that I don't want to get back to the studio. I take those out of there. And um, other times I'm sitting at lunch. I'm having lunch with a friend and I hand that packet to them. And the really important part of that is I want to see what other people feel about my work and just the way they flip through that little packet when they stop on something, when they talk about it, when they talk and they don't even look at the picture, that tells me a lot and helps my edit. I might not go with their edit, but at least it gives me a starting point and or a point of where to go with it. So it's really do you, do you ever go back to your rejected ones? Sometimes, yes. Ones? Yep. Sometimes I'll go. I'll go to the rejected ones and kind of go through them the same way and find. Hey, wait a Describe. second. <laughs> yeah, that that one's right, and I'll put it back in the pack, and I'll continue. Um, That's nice. so. So we're talking editing. Yeah, and and I think editing is is I feel everything you need to be ready for. Basically, a good edit makes it easier to create printed or web material, or maybe social media, or maybe you're not ready for book and show. And I'm, I'm I know that it takes years and years to to create a book or a show. But there are other things we can do with it, like uh, printing cards, print to sell, and and photo contest. You can go into, you can pitch stories to the magazine, and and so much. Basically, if you're ready with your edit, there are so many things you can do with it, and you'll be you'll be looking out for actually if you're ready with it. Right. So we all we all know our work the best. So you should first edit and then engage others such as friends, editors, art directors who might like your personal work, sometimes complete strangers. Just You're at a party yeah. or you're at a, an event or whatever. Just hand the hand that packet to the, to the person. Hand an iPad. You could have it on an iPad. You could have it on your phone. Um, it's just an idea of getting a feeling for it. Because um, in the end, no matter where the edit ends up. If you're going to do a personal book or have a show and enjoy it, you need to enjoy it when it comes off the press. You need to enjoy it when it's on the wall. So it really starts from you. Um, yeah, and I think the time the edit takes, it, it's after you come back again and again to it and it, it makes more sense to, some images make more sense than other, actually. Yeah, and sometimes just sticking it in a, in a drawer for a couple of weeks and coming back to it, it's a whole nother way of looking at it. Um, so the other ideas for your edited images. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Mike Baker, uh, he's out in Chicago, and they have these, these uh, shows all the time. But there are 50 different booths that he has to compete against in order to sell his work. His edit needs to be good for that market. So he really knows the market and he knows what's going to sell. Otherwise, he's going to sit there all day with some pictures on the wall that aren't going to go anywhere that he spent a lot of money on. A friend of mine down in, in Miami with, with Basel, she's always doing the shows down there. She has to go around to all the other shows and make sure that her work works within, the, within that market. Um, postcards. You can do postcards with your work, which is wonderful for promotion, wonderful for gifts. One, put the postcards together and sell. Um, Photo Shelter has got a way of putting together in different folders. Um, you can edit your work, all the cars, all the people, all the trees, and then you can share those folders with people to sell your work, uh, to show your work, and, and to promote your work. Uh, projections. Uh, Frank Mayo. Love oh, he is fantastic. I don't know if you've done it yet, but he's. I've done it three or four times. And man, but your edit needs to be incredible because you're sh gonna be through Frank. You're gonna be showing it to the world. So it's very, very important. Um, SBA, uh, New York Photo Salon, um, Camera Works. Um, there's there the Spider Awards, uh, photo contests. I mean, there are so many things that you can enter your work in uh, camera club. If you belong to a camera club, the better your edit, the better you're going to be seen by those people that are looking at your work. Um, I do a lot of nonprofit work, so I'll be I'll be somewhere. I will come back with 9000 images. Well, we only need 15, 20 images to promote the, the next trip. 
well, I need a really good edit of that work in order to get people to donate for the next trip. Um, and then personal, you know, personal advertising, personal promotion, um, that's got to be like right exactly with your with your style. Um, you know, I know that, that you do with your tourism, you do a lot of stuff with magazines. There's got to be something di a lot different with that. Yeah, the, it's, it's basically definitely it's as we come back with the tons and tons of images. Uh, we I travel a lot of destinations. You have a lot of folders to put it into. And then uh, I do the initial one or two edits and then it goes to the magazine and the photo editor looks through the story and then does the final edit. And I, I think I, I save some things which will not go for the for the magazine. And you save it for the social media. I mean, you know, sometimes images can be good, but it may not, not resonate with the story. So here you go, social media. Well, I, I think that if your social media is really well put together, the magazines will notice it and they'll say, hey, can you come shoot for us? Hey, can we buy a picture from your social media for the for the magazines? The magazines all the, the time, yeah. Are, they're constantly looking for material, and social media is the place. Um, so you really, really need to show your the best of the best of the best. Um, and and you know, if if you've got incredible images, let people see them, but only let you know you only have one chance. Um, so. Um, you know, one of the, one of the big things that editing is, um, is, is having uh, a printed piece made, um, and especially a book and, and, uh, I've got a, uh, a friend final destination to the editing actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> final, final destinations. Once it's printed, <laughs> that's it. Uh, so digital world solutions, um, we got together with them. We did a short video with them and, and they took us through the process and we learned a lot and, so um, much. It, was, oh, it was, it was a great day Tell me about your business. Yes. So we print a small format printing up to large format printing sizes on our digital small format printer is 13 by 19, uh, is the largest sheet. On our large format, 60 inches wide, up to about 200 feet long. So the other thing is people come back, again, with, again, tons and tons of material. Um, I've taken um, a group of material, and I wanted to show art directors. I wanted to show even family pictures of I, what I've done. And I was able to take a very simple book, this is a perfect bound book. Right, soft and cover. Soft cover, and I was able to put this together and I could print one book, two books, a thousand books, come back on Tuesday, print three more. So it's very convenient, but you also don't have a closet full of books. That is correct. A, a good friend of mine had this done years and years ago and I tried to get this done online. Nobody wanted to do it. So I came to you and I said, Fred, I'm gonna make poker cards. And you said, what? <laughs> yes. Well, two weeks later, we had the cards. We, we, I put together an InDesign file. And I now have a promotional piece that is either one, right, one deck, or 54. Correct. 54. Among family. Well, one of my, my uh, travel company, Travel uh, Camera Odysseys, I put together from these, this happens to be a deck from Cuba. Um, I put together a deck, and then when I had clients that I knew they really loved something, one guy loved uh, old American cars, I gave him a deck of old American cars. Another guy liked trains. I gave him a deck of just trains from Cuba. So it becomes a great promotion piece. Um, if you're not gonna do the book, right, here's the book. One thing that I, lo I love about working with a custom printer, and I'm so lucky to have found Fred here at uh, Digital World, is that I can be on press. All the stuff that I am learning about making books um, kind of gives me ideas, you know, coming up with the idea of, of the cards. Uh, when I had my, 
my, uh, my client that wanted to, to have a book done. I knew exactly how to lay it out as I was shooting it. So working with your printer opens up a lot. Thinking about the book starts when you start the trip, not when you're sitting in front of the computer going, now what am I going to do? Right. So I planned out the size of my book, double page spread here, by how I wanted to lay the pictures out. Some, sometimes, sometimes I have uh, double page spreads. Uh, sometimes I have, um, you know, multiple pictures. Sometimes I have one page. Well, you've got to kind of map that out uh, before you get the size. So when you, when you come to the printer, the paper's 13 by 19. Half a 13 by 19 is a nine, nine by nine and a half, nine and a half by 13. Yes. So you can, you can cut your printing costs by thinking about your book size. Absolutely. So if you're off, if you're off by half an inch, could d double the cost of your book. You can actually show the photographs to other people, see what they like. You can also, as an artist, put together the pictures any way you want. <laughs> it's your book. You can do anything you want with it. People keep saying, I've got to do this because. No, you've got to do this for you first. If you like it, nobody else likes it, it's your work, Ken, on your printer. It's my job to make sure that my name's spelled right. It's Absolutely. your right. It's your job to make sure it prints out. So. Let's go print. Absolutely. Let's go. Now we're at the chance of no editing. So many, <laughs> so many different uh, lights. If you don't have your edit done now, man, it's like, here it is coming out of the you know, printer. A mixture of lights and everything else. It's like crazy. And yeah. this is the cover. As you notice, we needed to have the right spacing for the gutter. So as we, as we go along, the pages will fit into the book tightly. It won't have any slop to it. A lot of times when you get a, uh, covers online, they're already made. So whatever paper or size paper or number of sheets that you put in there, it fits into a standard cover. This is where this custom comes in. So here I am trimming the spine of the book. And the reason why I'm putting this cardboard over my print is so that I don't leave an impression of the clamp on the final output of the book and he keeps his fingers out of there too. i'll show you what i'm talking about <laughs> now see he's getting the, the uh this is the part that i need to ensure and so i do an initial prep here i will remove these sheets that i don't need the front and back cover and we're ready for binding so I don't know how, the, we're how this machine works boy does book. it do a great job yeah that's... everything comes out exact that's Goes through the glue, it matches it up. I mean, it's just amazing. Now, we're only producing one book in this situation. Just think of um, doing the, when I did the nurse's book, we had 1,500 copies. We did it in a week and a half. So, so everything has got to be precisely done. 
and, and you really have to think about what you're doing. That took a lot of editing and it's still not done. This is, this is probably my 10th, 15th book over probably the last 30 years. And um, to me, this is a very personal book. It's on the Cuban artist. Um, and I, I know them all. I've traded them art. And um, if this is the only copy that I have, that's, that's fine. But it's not going to be. We're going to make a number of copies. It's going to go to 15 different institutions in uh, Cuba for their libraries. And I hope that the Cuban artists benefit from it and they get recognition around the world. So, so uh, that was kind of a kind of a crazy day, huh? You know, from but the... that gave me so much of insight about my book. And it was it, like I was just I was just thinking about my book and how it's going to go through the whole process. Went, went, through really your, went, through your, went through your editing process all over again, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it increased my. T <laughs> I thought I'm done. <laughs> So tell me about the book that you're working on. This one's yeah, so, pretty good. So Exquisite Gujarat is, is Gujarat is a is a westernmost state of uh, in India, and it's it's filled with artists. It's filled with and and it's still as it is. It's so virgin out there. You can still find people like this, and I've been shooting there for the last 10, 12 years, and and definitely gone through a lot of edits, and now I'm going to go through more, and and I think it's it's. It's very important as a as a, I'm a tourism photographer and I shoot for a particular tourism board, and for me to showcase the different areas of that to pay for them to pay attention to those areas and and that what actually helps me to shoot more for them and showcase other different areas which is not unexplored for them and also if they like the book, it's it's a win win because. Uh, if they like the book, then they are going to buy the book and they need some more books for their own purposes. They just send it around. And well, you can go to another tourism boards right. with it's the same great. book to showcase your work. Yeah. Right, a great, your great portfolio. portfolio. Yeah, great portfolio piece. Um, yeah, it's always win-win to have book. And you have some other books too, I think. Tell yes. me about it. <laughs> yeah, well, I am, as, as most know, I've been to Cuba quite a few times and um, the book... Simply uh, Bruce Byers Cuba it took me 12 years to shoot and and probably a year and a half to edit. Um, so you know, this this is one screen <laughs> of, of hundreds of screens, <laughs> you know, all the different people that I've met and all the different places I've gone to. Um, again, I've taken it down to um, a, a, a smaller amount and then taken it down to a smaller amount from there. I use the I use the the uh, booklets like I showed you in the beginning. Those are very very helpful. And then I laid out the book with my designer, and um, and we went through it and just laid it out. And it just was amazing because of the edit. It allowed me um, to be able to paginize the book a lot easier. A lot allowed me to to place images. Um, without having to dig through piles of images to do that. Um, and then once I got there, I so, said, well, I got too many boxes or I got too many cars. I only had to eliminate one or two instead of eliminating 300. Um, so it was it made it very easy. Um, and I, I know the images so well um, that I was able to get down to that very, very tight edit. Um, this is a big book, uh, 12 by 11, kind of a, a uh, you know, a coffee table, coffee table type book. Um, and, and then the, the, the book that we Cuban were showing, artists. yeah, that's showing there. I thought at, you were done with it. No, wow. not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I, I went to the, you know, that day at the printer, I go, uh oh, you know, that luckily we did that interview and we used the book as the, as the dummy book. And I go, I got some other work to do on this book. And that's, you know, you can't, once you send it off to online, you get back what you, what you sent them. Um, so 
There's a lot of text in here. We're going to add text. Um, the photographs are combined with the with the art that I've bought, uh, traded and bought and worked out with the guys. And, um, you know, it's it, it just kind of grows on you. But you at a certain point, though, you have to say, OK, this is great. And go how to the many dummy. How many dummy books you will print in the process? Uh, usually probably probably three. And being the fact that I'm, you know, with the part with the printer there, um, very good friends, but I bring him a lot of business and stuff. He allows me to uh, to extend it a little bit more, print a couple more that I need. And sometimes I'll just print one or two pages out of the book, not print the whole book, just one or two pages. And that will tell me, is my monitor off? Is and especially when yeah. I'm shooting black. And, yeah. So this will look uh, black and white here this way, but in the book, it'll look a lot differently because we're looking on the screen. There's so many variables. I mean, oh, from it's... time we shoot to the time the book comes out, there's so much goes on there. Yeah, yeah. It's difficult and that, to get. And if you even if you don't do a book, just going there to to uh, to watch the process is is just amazing. Right. Um, you know. Right, right. So um, the the other love that I have, and I'm sure most photographers have, wanting to put images on the wall. And yeah, that's that's the book on the wall. The book on the wall. <laughs> And the difference, the difference there is, is those pictures are on the wall all together. You don't have to flip through pages. They have to work together. They have to work within the space. And this was in a bookstore promoting the book. So it was kind of, kind of fit within the, in the store. Um, other pieces telling about myself. Um, this was uh, 14 years worth of shooting in a town upstate Connecticut. And um, I then put a show together in five different buildings of 240 prints. Well, each building had a specific uh, style, a specific reason for the images to be there. So it was like editing for five different shows. Um then I got a call and I said, you know, it was good old T-Mobile. They wanted 45 images for their corporate headquarters. And that was, from my street moments, that was just a wonderful, wonderful uh, gig. And those pictures are on the wall for hopefully as long as they keep them there. Um, so um, the old print shop, which is a great gallery that I've known for many, many, many years, and I it's quite old. I think. Yeah, it 18, uh, 1889, I believe. Um, and um, I've had my work there since 2000. And I sell the work through them. They promote the work. Um, but boy, I've got one box there. And that box is all I get. So my, my edit <laughs> better be incredible. Because they don't care. Get it out of here. Next. You know. Very so. tight. Yeah. So one of the one of the great things is uh, is that um, we got the 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 um, owner to uh, talk to us a little bit about what's going on with the uh, you know with shows and stuff like that. And they had the old print shop down on Twenty Fourth Street, wonderful place, a slice in New York. Should, should you go there? So we're gonna run a video here, short video of uh, talking to. To an owner in a store in a in a gallery. What a day! Yeah. Good afternoon, Robert. Nice to meet you, Bruce. And uh, tell me, what's what's the gallery all about? Well, this is the old print shop. Uh, we are an art gallery that's been around since 1898. Mm. Uh, we deal in primarily American art, uh, which includes photography, prints, paintings, and drawings. As a photographer, I've always always wanted to put my work on the wall. And I always thought that I just walk into a gallery, say, hey, here's my work. Can we put it on the wall? Well, that's a difficult thing. It all depends on the gallery you're looking at. And Let's say we, we talk and probably would take six months of talking back and forth, showing you work and stuff like that. And you, my work works through your gallery. What is my responsibility in the beginning? When I, when I bring the work in, what's my responsibility at your gallery? 
edit your work, bring in what you think is your best, and allow the gallery to look at it, and then the gallery will edit it again. Okay. So I have a bunch of prints in a box, and I come in with that box. What, what's your first impression? I want to look at the work and get an idea if it's going to fit or work with the gallery. So it's good for you to understand what we do and how, what artists I represent. Okay, so I don't need to have matted prints and framed prints in order to come in? Absolutely not. Okay. So, okay, we have agreed, and it's great, we have agreed we're going to put a show up. Right. What is my responsibility at that point here? Well, a lot of it's timing. Uh, remember that shows are usually nine months to a year out. So that if you're coming in now, in December, uh, we're looking at next fall for a mm -hmm. show, not, not next spring. Next spring, right. Because the gallery's already booked up in those time frames. So right. it's, you know, that's the first thing you have to remember. That, you know, we do have plans for the gallery that go on. And how long, how long does it take to promote the show? What's, what's the length of time ahead of the show? Three months. Three months, okay. And I would assume there's my responsibility to get my social media going, to get the word out as much as possible on my side. Because how much- Social media is good, and both of us should be doing it. Doing it. Okay, okay. Um, you know, you, you have a following, the gallery has a following, and both should be worked on carefully. That's the point of three months out. Uh, to get that really rolling. Everything has to be inventoried, imaged, again, to put on a web show as well as a gallery show. So right, these right. These are important things to get done. What are the costs involved? Depends on how far it goes. Simply to hang things on the wall, it's framing and matting. Uh, if we do a catalog, that's a different expense. The online show is a different expense. And how much is that on me? What, how much do I put to that? Sales costs are 50% of all sales. Right. But now, besides, besides that. It depends that. on the gallery that you're okay. working with. In my gallery, we just work on, on a dead sales commission. If you go to a co-op gallery, you are responsible for everything. Yeah. Matting, framing, promotional, printing, everything. Putting it on the wall? Putting it on the wall, hanging it up, manning the staffing the show. During the show, let's say it's a month, two months, three months, depending on your, your schedule. Four to six weeks. Four to six weeks. Okay, okay, that's good. That, that's really good. Um, so how much time should I allot to that show to be here? How important is it for the artist to be at the gallery during the show? During events that are advertised that you'll be here. I mean, as far as my gallery is concerned, that's how we work it. And we usually try to do two to three events during the exhibition time. So we'll have an opening where you kind of require that you're there to meet people and greet people. And then we'll do at least one or two discussions about your work where you'll come in and you'll talk about your work, either the process that you do, that how you look at photographs, how you take the photographs. Um, or just about yourself and your career. Um, I think that those are very important things to do for artists. So the most important thing that you can do is edit your work. With photography, there's no, thing, no process that creates more images than photography. To hang all your photographs on the wall in your studio and walk in your studio every day and take 10 down. Right. To the point where you get down to the sound bite that you want to state about what you're looking at in that image block. Because right. it's really important. So tomorrow my work's going to go on the wall? <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank, you, thank you very much. You're welcome. And we'll take it from there. Excellent. So, tomorrow my work is going on the wall, not yours. <laughs> well, why, why not? You know, I did the interview, right? I know them and everything else. Let's get the work on the wall. Um, what a day, like there's so well, so much knowledge <laughs> to share. Well, you know, one one of the things that comes from that also is again, and <laughs> we keep hearing this word edit, edit, edit. Um, well, 
you know, you could you could spend all that time and energy of editing and and uh, walking into the gallery, and the gallerist says, "No, no, no, no." <laughs> and it's like, well, 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 why not? Well, maybe it's because you didn't do the which we were talking about that kind of research. You're 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 selling a book to people who love art, hopefully or people who love your photography. But you've got to know that people love your photography first. You know, so getting it out to as many different people before you invest in the book or invest in actually going to those galleries, because galleries, one thing that I know they don't do is they do not forget. So, <laughs> you know, he, you, you walk in there with a pile of pictures that are just horribly edited or just there's nothing to them uh they're not i gonna... think i think being a photographer we also need another set of eyes as we discussed earlier and it's very important because we are so much in the process if somebody yes. needs to, <laughs> to wake us up <laughs> yeah it's sort of like oh i've uh, i've actually i've actually done edits and um and i've put together the the, I always use InDesign because it's very easy to move stuff around and shift and make PDFs and stuff like that. And at least five, six times I've looked at the, I've gone through the, the PDF and I go, this does not work. This does not work and scrap it and start all over again because I didn't do my edit first, but also I wasn't really thinking well enough when I was shooting my the for that, you know, I had this, I had this idea, I'm going to shoot, you know, I'm going to shoot uh, red umbrellas. And um, then I got distracted and I shot green umbrellas and purple umbrellas. And I get home and I only have five red umbrellas and I was supposed to do the entire book on red umbrella. It, it's, it, you've got to think way, way back into the beginning. Um, and yeah. I think for the book also, when we are shooting, it's always important when you feel this is a potential, there is a potential you're taking a shot, you always take it on a landscape portrait to be more sure because when you when the when your images are laying out on the book, sometimes you realize that, oh, it doesn't work on a landscape here, maybe portrait will work on a single page. Right. So it, it's always handy to have both of options with you. Yeah, I did it. I did a, the back to the book that I did during COVID on the nurses. Um, majority of the work was horizontal. So I created the layout of the, the, the size of the book to fit a horizontal. Um, and then I worked the verticals that were in it. Again, if I hadn't thought about that ahead of time, you know, I would have been all over the place. Um, you know, so one thing that I love, love, love doing is traveling and workshops. Um, we, we got some great. It's very guests. important, actually. It's yeah. it's it's so important to to go there uh, and and see and 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 we all we don't teach them to shoot. Everybody knows how they have their own style, but we can actually help you when you're stuck, where you're stuck, yeah. and we can see you and, and and you can just nudge you around and it, to get a person. And also, we'll take you to the potential places, like we are going to India, yeah, uh, January thirteenth. If anybody wants to join in. Right, right. And, you know, there's there's um, um, now um, because we can see on the back of the cameras, I can walk around and look behind people in the back of the cameras. And at eight, eight o'clock in the morning, I can correct that image. I can correct the, the wrong exposure. Maybe the camera's set up wrong or whatever. Instead of three o'clock in the afternoon, sitting down and editing your work at three o'clock in the afternoon with bad exposures because nobody corrected you at eight in the morning. So um, the edit starts when you shoot uh, because you got to walk away with the images. Um, the other the other place, which you know, the only reason I got all that material and the two books um, from from Cuba was the amount of times that I've been there. Um, we're going there to Santiago, which is on the eastern end of the island, and it's fantastic end of the island. Uh, February sixteenth, got a couple seats left. I'd love to have uh, people go on it, um, and and it's just an amazing place for creating. Um, and and you know when 
when I've been on the the number of people that have been on trips have come back to me and says, you know, this this is very informative. Because the the first hour, I'll look at everybody and says, the battery's charged, your camera's working. Everybody says, yep, yep, yep. Oh, fix this, fix that. Okay, that's it. Now let's go create. Yes, we have problems along the way with a camera or this or camera that, but the whole idea is figure out what you want, what you're going to shoot, what your idea is, and let's succeed at the end saying, hey, sit down at the farewell dinner and say, you know what, it's going to be a tough edit, but I but I think I've got what I wanted. So it's, it's very, very important. Um, uh, Nepal and Bhutan are are incredible places uh india again is an incredible place um and uh our backyard which is new york city is an incredible place you're in new york give us a call we'll go walk the streets with you that's there's tremendous amount of stuff to shoot in new york um so i want to i want to thank uh digital world for for putting up with us why we made him print this and cut this and <laughs> push this around and you know he he prints all the time and here's two guys trying to tell him you know can you move over here can you move over it's like, really guys yeah, get out of here let me take let me print you know get out of here and um and and the old print shop it's just a magnificent place and, and they got images from the 1700s there and and photography and 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 give it a try get your edit together and go to a gallery. Go we can do a workshop actually. At, yeah, at the, at the gallery. And, oh yeah, we can do a workshop too. at the gallery. We're gonna do a workshop at the uh, at the print shop at the printer also. So keep an eye on our site on our websites. And, and uh, also text us, like message us if you're looking for something like that that can help us to 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 go in direction. Yep, yeah, it yeah. works for everybody. And then after. I don't want to say how many years of photography and how many boxes and, and how many prints and everything else. If you're in the uh, Catskill, <laughs> New York, I am I'm taking the dive and I'm opening up a gallery in Catskill, New York. So give me a call. Come on, talk photography, walk the streets, walk the nature um, and and <laughs> see, see if I listen to myself. <laughs> That's <laughs> like put images on the wall. <laughs> Tell you how many pictures I bought or I sold or whatever. <laughs> you know, so that this is this is my you know June is June is a date, and I got a lot of work to do. Um, so um, wanna I want to thank B and H, uh, which you know I've been depending on their expertise for literally forty five years. They just had their fiftieth birthday, and. Uh, I, I missed their opening store because uh, I was still up at RIT in Rochester. But, you know, I think the candy that I ate 45 years ago is still there because it's still hard <laughs> to chew. Oh. <laughs> and when I travel, BNH is the only place where I go for because they have everything from from my camera case to, to a camera bag to camera, anything you can think of regarding photography and creating, actually, from video to film. Yeah. It's amazing. So, you know, we would love to hear from you guys. If you got any questions, you know, this is the time. Let's have a little Q&A. And uh, you got this. You can yeah. give us hell. Give us hell. Yeah, so we'll <laughs> open it up for questions. I'm going to start the, off with the questions. How long do you guys normally let a project sit before you take it to the next step of printing or, or however you're going to do it, whether it's a print, a book? Do you guys let it sit and marinate and come back to it? Or how fast do you move on once you have the project, the shooting part of the project complete? Well, it, de it depends on um, the, the one, the one um, uh, uh, city up there in, in Connecticut. It took me 14 years to get to where I said, now I'm going to put a book together. <laughs> and uh, the Cuba has taken 12 years. Uh, but the um second cuba book on the artists have been doing it for the last um two years and i'll i'll let it sit for a month i'll let it sit for two months uh but then we're right now we're in the rush to get it together so when i go back into cuba in february i can take it with me 
So there is a deadline. There is a there is a cutoff um, that yeah, you yeah, yeah. pay attention to. Um, and I even even with your with your tourism, you got to get it to yeah, yeah, yeah. ahead of the tourism. I think, I think deadlines are the lifelines. I would always say that because uh, it differs when you're shooting for a magazine. Definitely, the story is going. It, it's it's going with, and it has a deadline, so you have to get it done. And it, it it's amazing that it gets done anyways. <laughs> and when you have, you can take 12 years and it can take 10 years and sometimes you can finish in 10 months. Right. So it all depends on, on how that, but, but it, it works out well at the end, I think. I've done, I've done, uh, when I did the nurse's book during COVID, I shot for 15 weeks and then I produced a book in two months and we pay, and it was 1500 copies. I didn't have any time. They needed it. And I would let it sit a day or two and they come back to it a day or two and come back to it. Being an artist, you never are satisfied. There's a edit yeah. never ends for us. <laughs> yeah. You got to You have to Somebody put that, like you come. said, that deadline, you have to put that in or else it'll uh, keep going and going and going. Yeah. It just, a, it, just, uh, it just ends up being a, uh, a to-do list if you don't put a date on it. Yeah, that sounds like mine. <laughs> all my all my books and projects are to-do lists. They're all 10% complete and right. still working on them. Right. You did have a question. But you can, it's me. always better to, to put a deadline if you really want to go for it. Even if you don't meet that, I think eventually you will done more work than you could have ever done before. Right. Yeah. It's some, some kind of deadline. Yeah, it's definitely a good a good habit to put in place to kind of cut yourself off and and give yourself that that motivation, especially for those people that are that do their homework the morning of class while the teacher's going around collecting it. Right. <laughs> Glenn joining us on YouTube asking, do you help workshop attendees create books post trip? I have. I have. I I expressed to everybody, you know, once they've signed up or even if they're interested in the in the trip. Um, I've said to them, hey, you know, come down, come talk to me. I've had some people meet me uh, ahead of the trip. And and so that when they hit the trip, it might be eight days. They're ready to go the moment they get there, which is incredibly important. Very, very important. I think it helps uh, us and it helps them to to get ready for the whole thing. And we always encourage them to, you know, talk to us and and whatever questions you have, whatever preparation you need, if you have any doubts, what to get, what not to get, if you have any issue with the technical stuff, with cameras, anything. I mean, I, I've even had somebody um, meet me at the store with their, with their cameras to make sure that they had the right equipment to do what they were thinking to do. You know, if, if they're shooting people, they don't need their 600 millimeter lens. They're shooting mm -hmm. birds. They might, think about and you know some people just don't think because that's they they don't have the idea down tight do most people prepare before a trip with you guys i mean obviously when you're going on a trip with somebody who who is going to be your guide and take you place it i would think some people are going to be like okay i'm in good hands they're kind of going to serve up whatever the the content is that we're going to be taking photos of do most people pre-prepare and have an idea of exactly what they want to take photos of or any project ideas that they're bringing into that trip? No, unfortunately. Um, and so I do reach out because I think, I think our trips are, are unique in the fact that there's a lot of trips where the photographer will take pictures and say, that's how you do it. And then move on. Well, I walk down the street and I say, remember the red thing that you wanted to shoot back then? Here's another one. Check this out. You take that, take pictures, we'll talk about it. And I keep doing that all the way through. I even I even uh, brought a, a creative director down to Cuba once. And I spent an extra four days down in, in Cuba to put a brochure um, on uh, for my promotion. And we went and did four different shoots. And so it was a lot of prep beforehand during... Um, we also, there's what's called, I call it eye candy, especially, especially in Cuba with the old cars and the historical and everything. And I let people go for about four hours, take a picture and they take more pictures than you can imagine. And, and then at lunch, they say, okay, guys, now let's start taking pictures. And they go, what do you, 
Oh, I know what you're talking about. I've seen, I've photographed 92 cars this morning. I think I should start thinking. <laughs> so, <laughs> how, I mean, it, on that topic, how do you recommend to people to go to a place that is heavily traveled, heavily photographed, and not fall into the trap of just taking the same photos that everyone else is taking? I know Cuba incredibly well. And I have a lot of friends down there. Um, I In the last two years, I picked up 100 friends because I went into 100 different artist studios. Every time you walk into someone's home or an artist studio, it's a completely new thing. There's, uh, they're very, I know people go into studios, but they go in to look to art. We go in the studio to sit there and have rum, talk art, photograph, and everything, which is a very unique thing. Um, the the uh, Even uh, this next trip is going to go into different places like that. So it's it's very important. Mm. I think it's more about you know your destination well, and that can you can guide them through it. If you know it so well, it helps. And for them, it, they are not wasting any time. We are taking them exactly where the potential is. And, and and they get max out of it. So that's why I feel it's a win-win for them. It's it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing how um, everybody says, oh, Cuba. And the, the very first thing they say is the old cars. And I'll show them a book. And the, the worst thing about the title of my book, it says Cuba on it. Because they have a, they look at it differently than, than my mm. street moments. So, I would love to cover up the word Cuba and let them go through the book <laughs> and have the title on the end of the book, right? Um, yeah, and also, <clears throat> I think it's um, like most of my, uh, like Gujarat being, it's not, you cannot, you cannot just walk through Gujarat because it's not open like other places. I don't know how much you know about India, but it's not like Rajasthan or, or Taj Mahal where you can just book from here and just go there. And in this trip, what Gujarat we are going, is you're going each and every small, small individual villages, very difficult to get reached uh, uh, and talk to all these artisans there. So it, it's also to take them to places which they cannot go otherwise. That's also one of the important part of, of any workshop it should I have. I, I took, I took this, uh, some clients to Sri Lanka on a medical mission. <clears throat> and uh, they were photo we were photographing in in ORs and everything else, and then we traveled through the countryside. So you got both, um, and uh, they had a they had absolutely no idea what they're going to get, but it was the the excitement of the adventure. Um, so and literally, Cuba is very hard. It's very hard to get people over that, but we I think we succeed. And India, instead of going to the south, we go up to the northwest. We stay away from the paint and the spray guns. And and that's kind of a, like going to Niagara <laughs> Falls and trying to take a good picture of Niagara Falls that nobody's taken up before. You know, so. Well, I'm, I'm glad you guys went into this topic. It's one of my favorite topics to discuss. And I think that we've become a, a class of photographers that just are content to post pictures online. Okay. And they need to be in tangible means it's it's something different to hold your print whether it's a single print or a book to have that that record of all that you're putting into your work so I, it's such a great topic i want to thank you guys for bringing it on to all of our viewers out there thank you guys as well um guys did leave their information here so if you have any questions at all don't hesitate to reach out because i would never put my phone no, joking. Um, <laughs> use it. Use the information that's there. That's why we put it out there. You know, it is it is a daunting topic, especially if you haven't done any work past just processing your images and, and keeping them online or on a hard drive or posting them. Print and let these right. guys show you the way. Definitely. So, guys, huge thank you again. Pleasure right. to have you back on. Always good information to all of our viewers out thank there. You thank, you. thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Always, always a gracious pleasure. To have you guys on. So huge thank you to everybody out there watching. That's it. Another rendition of the BH virtual event space in the books. Catch y'all next time. All right. Thank you. Thank you.